Hello and welcome back to my Diplo research station where today I'm going to show you how to make these realistic rope bridges out of access ramps. I made these using a variation of my building natural curves technique as seen in a previous video. So I'm Faro and this is building rope bridges. The aim with this technique is to have these gently curving naturally sagging bridges that give the effect of gravity working upon the bridge. Anybody who has used access ramps in their build will know that they are quite tricky to use. They have a tendency to disappear and they cascade delete if you delete one attached to something else. So rather than building up the curves as we go along as demonstrated in my natural curves video, the easiest way to build a bridge like this is to build all of the scaffolding first and then build the actual bridge last. It is also difficult to predict how far the span of the bridge will be. So in this case, I built the bridge first and then built the towers that are attached to it. So let's pop along to my research and development base where I can show you how I built it. For the purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to build a smaller version than the one you saw earlier. For this one, the scaffolding will consist of a central small floor with five small floors attached on either side. At each end will be a ladder consisting of six short walls with a spacing of a short wall. I will use this ladder to position six light boxes via the light floor to light box adjacency. Here we have the full frame. Next, I'll position another light box in the central position using the same adjacency. I can now delete this frame and we will just use the light boxes. I'm going to use color coding in this build because it does get quite difficult to work out exactly where you are. The lowest rung of our ladder will be color coded red. and I'm going to save the position of the central light box with a red box below it, well out of the way of our build. Since making my Building Natural Curves video, the builder Beeblebum further developed my light box technique using an adjacency glitch on top of a light box. This makes it quicker to run wires from one light box to another. So I'll be using that in this build. The technique involves snapping a noise box on top of a light box and adjacency glitching to a wire. You can then drag this wire to a wire point or in this case to the top of another light box and use exactly the same adjacency to position it there. For this build there are benefits and disadvantages of using this particular technique which will be covered later. But for now, this is the simplest way to build up the wireframe structure that we need for our scaffolding. I'm going to use a rainbow sequence to colour code my boxes. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue and I guess purple. These are conveniently positioned next to each other in the colour menu. To start the scaffolding for the bridge proper, we're going to use small pavers. These are conveniently the same size as access ramps. We already have a central position to glitch the first one onto, but we need a glitch point on each edge so that we can begin to develop the curve. Just as I did in the natural curves video, I will use the adjacency from a glass floor to a small floor to position a light floor and then adjacency to a light box. If I then position a light box below it, it will be in the perfect position to drag a wire to our next point, thereby beginning our gentle curve. Again, we can use the noise box technique to drag a wire to the next step on our ladder.
From now on I'm going to focus on just one side of the bridge. But it is probably easier to develop both sides of the bridge at once, using the colour code as you go. For each step along the way, we blend a glitch a small paver onto the wire, snap another small paver and then adjacency to a large one in the third position. This gives us the central position for each ramp and also the leading edge for our curve. For each of these points we use exactly the same method to position a light box. The central light box will be saved in exactly the same way as before and colour coded. And the leading edge will be used to drag a new wire. Once this process is completed for all of the points on the bridge and we have the last two wires, the next thing to do is to drag a wire between them. This provides us with two points to glitch on platforms for the end of the bridges. In this example the platforms are slightly high. You can walk from platform to platform via the bridge, but there's a slight hitch point as you get onto the platform. For a perfect walkway you might want to bring these platforms down slightly using a micro adjustment. I am working on a micro adjustment video but it may take some time. However I did recently post a suitable micro adjustment as a YouTube short. Next we need to bring our light boxes back up to the level of the bridge so we can use them to glitch onto. With all of them done, we can then pull wires from the top of each corresponding colour on our ladder. This leaves us with a sequence of glitch points that we can glitch our access ramps onto. One potential problem with this is that if you delete a wire, the whole bridge will disappear. Alternatively, we could glitch onto light boxes. To do this, we would position light boxes beside our existing ones. Drag a wire between them. leaving some scaffolding consisting of a ladder of wires. We can then blend a glitch light boxes onto these wires, leaving the equivalent set of glitch points for our access ramp. So let's go ahead and build the actual bridge using these two sets of glitch points. We simply blend a glitch the access ramps onto the wires or the power points of the light boxes. I'm deliberately leaving the middle one until last. Because the access ramps can cascade delete, meaning if you delete one all of them can disappear, it is wise not to delete these glitch points until we're finished with the whole bridge. 
If you use the simpler wire glitch points, you can't delete the wires at all. In this case, you may want to use the wire cloaking device. Using the light box method, we can delete the light boxes and the wire ladder construction without risking a cascade delete. Also, if we use the light box technique, there is no problem with the center. You can glitch the entire span from one end to another with no issues. Let's take a look at what happens if you use the wires. The central access ramp doesn't make a connection to both sides. You can see a small difference where there's no chain link on one side. This happens because we approach the centre from two different directions. We can get round this by using two access ramps, one glitched onto each direction of the wire. It is wise to save at this point to avoid any cascade deleting if you make a mistake. Whichever method you choose should result in a nice, smooth, evenly drooping bridge. So that's how I build rope bridges. The long bridge you saw earlier just had a wider construction with a more gradual ladder. Have fun building and bye for now!